everybody. <laughs> this is very cool. Hey, AOL well build audience. This, honestly, this is one of the best audiences you will ever find, so I, I have to just say that. I love you guys. But you are, woo! I love it. You are a food triple threat. You are, you are, you are a TV person, you are a, a you actually cook, and you have TV shows. Like, yeah. I thought you were going to say short, bald, and fat, but I'm, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> That's not I'm happy you say. went with the other No, way. no. So, <laughs> so you do all these things. How do you find time to do all of them? But what do you, what's the easiest, what's the hardest to do of the three? Um, gosh, I, you know, I don't know. I, I mean, still my favorite thing to be is in the restaurants, mm -hmm. cooking in the restaurants. I yeah. mean, that's... It's where I started, it's where I'm most comfortable, it's where I love yeah. to be the most. So, uh, you know, that's always my number one. Um, so you started in Cleveland, a Cleveland. young, picture, let's picture a young Michael, barely tall enough to fit over the counter. I was thin with hair, it was very fantastic. <laughs> Those are the good old days. Yeah, it sucked my wife right in, and I look at her. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's like, oh, she looks at my dad, he's very tall and thin with thick curly hair, she calls him right. false advertising. Right. <laughs> 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 so how did we how did we get here from being a little Michael Simon? How, what was the first moment that you thought I belong in the kitchen? You know, I, I started working in restaurants. Uh, you know, my mother's Greek and Sicilian, so I was always in the kitchen right. because that's what you know. When when your mom's Greek and Sicilian, all they do is cook and feed you. So right. you just naturally drift to the kitchen. I started working in restaurants when I was thirteen. Um, moved to New York when I was eighteen. And then my wife and myself, Liz, opened our first uh, restaurant in Cleveland 20 years ago. And now, yeah, let's hear for that. Yeah. And that was really, truly just the beginning because now you have how many restaurants? Um, we have 20 restaurants that we, uh, 15 that we own, five that we oversee. Uh -huh. um, you know, and then we have, I have the two TV shows, The Chew and, and uh, Burgers, Brew and Q on Food Network, and then the cookbooks and all the other stuff. So, yeah, it's fun. I, you know, I'm, I'm very, very lucky. I, I found something that I love to do. Mm -hmm. I get to do it every single day. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I used to do it just strictly in the restaurants, and the thing I love about doing it on television is it, it gives you a, uh, a broader ability to teach. You know, yeah. I used to, I just would teach the cooks that were sitting next to me. Yeah. And, and now, you know, with the Chew, we get almost three million viewers a day. So you could teach right. a lot of people. Right, exactly. You know? Okay. So of the things that you cook, what's your most favorite thing to cook? Is there one? <sighs> it's tough. I, you know, I, it changes a lot. Um, what's I, your I mean, current thing that you're into? I'm meat. I'm meat. I'm a meat guy. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, uh, I, I definitely think that's my specialty. That's what I do best. That's what I love to cook the most, which is kind of funny because my wife's a vegetarian. But No, really? Uh, yeah. It's like God's joke on me. <laughs> because, We're going to make you a chef really good with meat, and I'm going to give you this beautiful woman. She doesn't eat any of it. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. So she just gets like a big head of lettuce after you. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, it's, it's actually made me a much better chef because, uh, you know, it's, it's taught, like I, I think that, the, the thing that sets a great dish apart is is it's the toys that are with it, the right. accompaniments yeah. that are with it, the, the whether it be a marinade or the accompaniments of vegetables or the sauces, mm -hmm. that's what makes it special. So Is she a vegetarian that will eat something that you say is meaty, like meat? I don't understand when a vegetarian no. will get like a, a burger. Made She'll never flesh. order a veggie burger. Yeah, like that no. doesn't make sense. She goes, it's I don't like, like meat. Yeah, Why would I, like I get meat. a vegetable? Let's burger. get something that's kind of like meat, but <laughs> right. not meat. Okay, good. Yeah. So, okay, what's the one dish that if you never made it again or never ate it again you'd be okay with it. Is there one? Mm. Wow, that's a Take good a moment. question. Take a moment. One dish that... What food I, don't you like? What oh, well, you the, uh, well I, I don't eat raspberries and kiwi, but I'm allergic to them. Oh, okay. I mean, so not they, like, because they're not going to kill me. They just yeah. they make my mouth itch they incessantly. They make you uncomfortably. So, yeah. Yeah, so I don't like to be uncomfortable. I'm too old to be uncomfortable. We're too old to be uncomfortable. Right, I wear flip-flops around town. <laughs> exactly. As you should. Okay, we, uh, I can't wait to get started here because, first of all, it's summer. There's something about summer that cries out good, fresh food, fresh flavors. And there are certain foods that cry out summer. Absolutely. Tea is one of them. Oh. Fried chicken, Absolutely. chicken in general. Yep. What, tell me what, what summer food kind of resonates with you. Well, I mean, fried chicken, I think, yeah. is one. Tea, obviously, I grew up, I grew up drinking tea, mm -hmm. you know, like it was something that's always been, like, around in my life. So I think it, and especially in the summertime, it really yeah. makes it sweet yeah. summer. Barbecue is another mm -hmm. summertime favorite for me. Um, but I, anything that you could, I think food that, like, makes you think picnic, mm -hmm. um, like, put in a, 
middle of a table with all your friends and family and right. everybody dives in and gets a bite of it. Right. You know, I think that's really what screams summertime. Yeah, yeah. Well, show, uh, show everybody what you're making today. First of all, you teamed up with Lipton to make amazing dishes and beverages that yeah. incorporate Lipton tea. Yeah, and uh, so for me, it's, it's a very fun partnership with Lipton. Um, you know, it's, it's about Chef Fest, which is getting people together around the table, mm -hmm. enjoying food, and I'm showing you some fun things to do um, with iced tea that maybe people wouldn't think of. Yeah. Um, so the first thing that we're doing is, is we're making a, a uh, Lipton tea brined chicken that we're then going to fry. Well, so, how bad can that be? And, and what I tell people when they're thinking about, like, I love using the, the half and half, which is half iced tea, half lemon, uh -huh. so it has yeah, both of those totally, flavors yeah. going on, because these are flavors that I love with chicken. Mm -hmm. So when you think about infusing an ingredient into a dish, think of things that you like together. So, right. you know, iced tea lemon chicken totally. all okay. right so Show us a little bit here so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the brine and i just have a lemon i'm going to cut up the I lemon i get to watch this is awesome <laughs> <laughs> we squeeze do the... something else <laughs> watch this <laughs> look what i could do look what i could do so we put in one lemon got it a little bit of honey and and obviously the the half and half has lemon in it already yeah. but it's just bumping it up a little You're bit bumping it up a couple bay leaves that you just, I'm using fresh bay leaves Those are super here. fresh bay leaves. Yeah, super fresh. And you just, whenever you have a, a fresh herb like this, you just want to pinch it a little bit, get the right. oils going it out of it. The, it releases the hidden flavors. Re it releases the hounds, yes. And then we take <laughs> and this our is half really and just half, half, half and half iced tea. Uh, and this is basically just enough to submerge the chicken, is that just right? Just enough to submerge the chicken. You stir this up so it comes together. Some people, you know, put sugar, different things in the brine. I just put a little bit of honey and then the natural sweetness right. of the tea and you're right. off to go. You would take the chicken, you would brine it in this liquid overnight, overnight. or at least for like four hours. At least for four, okay. And it's just gonna, that's just going to soak all that deliciousness it, up. Yeah, it, right? so, it soaks up the goodness. Soak it up. So at this point, I pull it out, I pat it dry mm -hmm. um, with a paper towel, and I just put it out so it, it almost air dries, so you take some of that outside moisture out. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then we just make what we're going to coat the, the chicken in. So got? I go toasted coriander seed, about a tablespoon. A little bit of cayenne because you need some heat. Yep. This is a great trick. You can put some cayenne on the table too. I have, That's I always you, have, I'm a big supporter of that. You keep everything well, spicy. Last back, exactly. So I have all purpose flour here and I'm going to add a little bit of cornstarch to it, which is going to make it uh, extra crispy. Oh, really? So, yeah, the, the, it, you could also use like a rice flour as opposed to all purpose or, um, you know, and then it, it has less gluten in it, so it makes it a crispier hey, chicken. Science is cool. Science is cool. And then <laughs> this is, home with you, you know, I had some family that was in. Um, wait, wait, what was that? I'm, I'm gonna, just yeah. talking right It's over okay. I had that? some family that was in Baltimore, so I learned this trick when I was a kid. Uh -huh. Put a little bit of Old Bay spice in. Okay. Um, with, with your seasoning, mm -hmm. and then you get all that celery seed and the coriander and all the oregano it. right Who'd have thought celery seed, right? Like, celery Who knew? Seed? Who knew? You know? I, I mean, didn't know. celery, as you know, is so spicy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but like but it, celery seed It gives so you great backbone. It, like, the, 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 my favorite dishes are the ones where you're like, wow, something in there makes it really good, but you really yeah. can't 100% say right. what it is. And you like that kind of thing. I do. I don't like the mystery. I like to know. I but like now I know. It's celery seed. seed. Now celery. you get the best of both worlds. All right, good. Then you just dredge. Right in here, boom, 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 like Dredge you would. Away. A we'll classic. Imagine. We'll imagine. So you yeah. coat it. All right. So then, here's the thing: you don't want the chicken to be too wet. Like, how do you know when to dredge? It's not. You have a nice glistening chicken here. This, I know you want to know. Yeah. Know well, know. what I do is, is I, I put the chicken in the fridge uncovered for at least about 10 minutes. Okay. And so, and then I tamp it down so there's no exterior moisture. Then right. you go right in. Okay. And then perfect. that's it. Perfect. I fry it at uh, about 335 degrees. Um, in a perfect world, I'd yeah. fry it in, in schmaltz, a little bit of chicken fat, oh. because then chicken, chicken, extra flavor, and, and you're off to and the races. And it's called schmaltz? Schmaltz. That's like the technical name for chicken fat? Schmaltz. It is now. Okay. It, no, it, it no, is in really? real life. I wasn't sure. Like, not just here. Is that a thing? Everywhere. Yeah, this, it's I a thing. I got schmaltz stuff. Uh, yeah, like, see? You get schmaltz. Okay, so 335. How, okay, here's the thing. How do you know when your fried chicken is done on the inside? Well, you want it to be golden brown on the outside. A lot of people fry it too hot, like a 365, 370, and then it, it starts to get too dark. It doesn't cook all the way through. Oh. You do it in a cast iron pan. You get it around 325, 335. It gets golden brown. But check with a the thermometer. Okay. When you're 160 in the middle, it's done. Okay. If it's too dark, put it in a 300-degree oven. 
warm it up. And let and it cook the rest of the way. Okay, here's the question. So you're doing it in a cast iron pan, because I always think deep fryer. I'm thinking of like those fast food joints that I go yeah. to, and there's like this big vat. So I'm thinking I have a big, big pot. But you actually say a cast iron pan, like how deep, full of oil? About this deep. Okay, so a good amount. So yeah. it can almost submerge the chicken. Yep. And okay. and you know you don't. And then you give it. You let it get golden brown. You flip it. You let it get golden brown on the other side, and then you're done. The oh. word vat and food should never go together. No I vats. Agree. We're vatless. Vat of chocolate. Yeah, we're vatless. Yeah, we are vatless. We are yeah. vat-free, all schmaltz. All schmaltz. Okay, now what? Um, you're gonna, also, I would have seasoned this with a little bit of salt and pepper. We fry our chicken up, and look, now it's Come on, beautiful. Look Brian, Just like that. Brian. So then I take a little bit of honey and a little bit of sriracha, Ooh. or whatever your favorite hot sauce is, and I just drizzle it on top like this. That's amazing. To give it a little bit of zippity. A little bit of zippity. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, how many, so the interesting thing is, so the inside of that chicken has got all that tea and lemon in there. It's from Full the of moisture. Tea. Yeah. Thank you. Come on. Don't mind if I do. Are there napkins anywhere? No. Oh, I got you. Don't worry. It's really good. You're going to have to take my word for it. It's amazing. <laughs> I spend my whole life eating on television, so I like to make other people eat in front of people. Too. I've said this before, yeah. too. Like, and you've eaten on television where you have to just look at the camera and be like, mmm. Mm. Like that's oh, hard yeah. to do. Like it's hard to talk to the camera like it's a person you could without do it. anyone just. Chip. You, you got to go deep. You got to just. Mm. Yeah, like get... yeah, it's really good. I mean, you kind of give me a small piece. I don't know what that's about, but it's really delicious. That is really good. I started to not notice the chicken anymore. Though. Oh. Like... <laughs> you know what I love about this? What's that? It has that great flavor. I'm, I'm yeah, I, I was totally in. You're like, what? You get the, the, uh, the little bit of the lemon, the flavor of the iced tea. The chicken's incredibly moist because it's been brined. It still has some crunch on the outside. And the hint of that celery seed. Mm. The celery seed. And the celery seed. Mm. And the fresh bay leaf. Mm -hmm. Come on. And the Old Bay seasoning. By yeah. the way, if someone wanted to get this recipe, where would they go for it? Well, you Michael? could go to LiptonBrightBites.com. Mm -hmm. It has all the recipes. Uh, that I worked on with Lipton, some great cocktails that I worked on really? with them also. Also, it gives you a little bit. We're going to make a cocktail. Yeah. Be cool. And, and it gives you, um, I'm doing some great things throughout the fall in Austin and D.C. and Atlanta. Some really fun friends of mine that are celebrities are going to come do some things with me. Sophia Bush and some Fantastic. others, which will be great. So you're doing some videos for them. You have the recipes on there right now. Recipes on there right now. There'll be all kinds of content and videos, a lot of, uh, and, and, and it'll tell you about where we're going to be, where we're going to be cooking. Could come join the party. Awesome. Um, you couldn't hear me chewing, could you? That would be nasty. Am I no, find you, out later? you chew like an angel. I do. I get that a lot. <laughs> I get that a lot. That's what my mother always used to say. Um, by the way, uh, just a quick question as it relates to tea. Sweetened or unsweetened? It depends on my mood. I feel like there are two schools of thought. Yeah, I, I think a lot of people feel that way. For me, it's a mood thing. Like, um, You're in an unsweetened kind of mood. I haven't just, really thought about it that. It just depends. Like it depends what I'm eating, what I'm ha enjoying it with, what I'm pairing it with. Okay. You know, and the, it's the same with the flavors. Like, you know, I think lemon goes great with chicken. I also totally. think peach would go great with chicken. Um, but like, if I'm having a steak, something on the less fruity or less sweeter side would would be more tasty for me. Well, let's do -si do so that we could do the um, the drink. All right. You know what a do -si do is, We're right? Gonna, yeah. oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh, no! Okay. You don't, and I do -si. I know. I was Two not. do's, not enough do -si. <laughs> Okay. So, what, okay, of course, you got to think uh, summer cocktail. you got to mm -hmm. think some booze goes good with tea. This is one of my absolute favorites. So we use a little bit of the uh, Lipton half and half iced tea, whatever your favorite bourbon is, Yes. and some bitters. And we shake that up really good. So okay. essentially what I'm going to go is I'm going to go two parts tea. I'm going to go one part bourbon and then a couple or, shakes or, of Or bitter. two. <laughs> Depends no, on the mood. No, you don't want it to be too strong because you don't want to lose all the flavor. And then you just don't want to be on the yeah, table. I mean, you don't want to be under the table. You want to be that guy. It, 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 it depends what day of the week it is. Right, you know, exactly. But you, you could get a little bit. Here, so. Days that end in Y. Okay. How's oh, that good for you? It's great. Okay, that's that's good. great. Right. I do like it a little strong. I'm going to see if I could grow a little bit of hair right here. Right. Then a couple shakes of bitter. Bitters are really hot right now. Every, like every kind of bitter under the sun. Well, there's tons of different flavors, uh, and there's tons of great, some great artisanal ones right now, too, that yeah. you can make. So then we just shake this as hard as we possibly can. Work it. Work it, Michael. Shake it. Okay. All right. I, was a little, I had some heavy chairing last night for the calves, <laughs> and I can't, I can't, uh, my shake arm's broken, I think. And then you fill a glass with ice. 
Okay, building glass. That's oh, I think that was the glass. No. Well, no, I'm going to use oh, that. Oh, I'm just going to make a big. I'm going to make a big. Make a big one. On. Okay. Okay. There we go. So just again, two parts tea, one part. Two your parts favorite tea, one whiskey. part your favorite whiskey bourbon. Or bourbon. Sorry. Then a couple shakes. Right. And then what I do is I go about three quarters up like that. Yeah. And then whatever you could hit this with a soda, a tonic, but uh -huh. I like doing it with a little bit of uh, sparkling orange soda. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> and you good. could garnish it. You could garnish it with some lemon or orange slice if yeah. you'd like. But yeah. I'm just gonna give it to you. Mmm. This is delicious. What are you having? Is, it, huh? is there room for one for you? Oh, oh I was just gonna, <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I was going to get you all loaded and leave. Yeah, that's, easy. <laughs> that's easy. All right, I'll head start. It's already 11. So. Another great day of work. <laughs> so, and again, this is one of those, you know, it doesn't, sometimes you think bourbon's going to knock you out, but this is just the right amount. To me, this is the absolute perfect summer cocktail. I could, I drink these poolside some, all summer long. Yeah. I love this. Okay, so... We have a lot of people watching. We have a lot of people here in the audience that are chasing oh, a good. dream here that you, you've managed to accomplish a lot in your lifetime. And you're a young guy. I say you're young because I think we're about the same age. So oh, good. You're very young. We're young, incredibly young. Yeah, um, but uh, no, you are, though. And you've managed to accomplish a lot of things. First of all, what advice do you give people? Did you always know this is what you wanted to go after? Well, I was lucky. I got started at it, and it got started at it in a young, at a young age. Right. Um, doesn't take much bourbon for you. No, uh, I'm a cheap date. <laughs> what are you doing for dinner? Um, so, and then I was able just to kind of follow my path. And, and I was also fortunate because the restaurant business is a little crazy. It's a lot of 80, 90, 100 hour weeks. Mm -hmm. But my wife is my business partner. Right. So we That's always we did it together. And now our son's getting in the business. And, you know, so it's, it's, it's fun. And I, I think the, the best advice I could give to anybody is... Always choose something that you really love to do right. because you're going to be working hard. There's going to be a lot of hours in it. There's going to be frustrating things that yeah. happen and setbacks and all those kind of things. But if you're doing something that you love, chances are you're going to be fine. Yeah, it doesn't feel as, it doesn't like work. Feel yeah, as yeah. horrible. Yeah. Okay, so we were talking a little bit in the, in the, in the uh, green room about how you, when you cook, you come home, you smell like whatever you were making. Oh. Um, and, uh, which, I mean, if you're going to smell like something, I'd yeah, say fried I mean, chicken is my favorite color. Right, unless your wife's a vegetarian. Right, exactly. <laughs> she's, she's like, take that. God, I wish I smelled like basil right now. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> smell like exactly. kale. <laughs> exactly. She loved that. Ooh, he's sexy. Um, but you have a great story about your dog. So tell I me, do. Everyone has to hear this story because it's really fun. Well, I have a, a, about 105, 110 pound Old English bulldog, the big bulldog. That's like heavier you know? than Kate Moss. Like that's a big dog. It's twice as heavy as Kate that's Moss. Like, that's two supermodels. His, his hind quarter is heavier than yeah. Kate Moss. Um, and he's been an incredibly well-behaved dog ever since we got him as a puppy. Never chewed anything. Never got into garbage. Just never did anything wrong. We were like very lucky. So we opened up a, a barbecue restaurant in Cleveland called Mabel's. Um, Which, and by the way, your restaurants in Cleveland are amazing. Thank You've you very much. You revitalized an entire street in Cleveland has been revitalized. Yeah, Cleveland. we've been very lucky. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very comfortable because I see the LeBron jersey right there. Yeah. So, um, so we opened Mabel's and, and you know, when you open a restaurant like for the first six, eight weeks, you're there like 18 hours a day yeah. and you're just grinding, you're getting everything done. And I get home from work, I take a shower, you know, I leave my, I'm exhausted. It's been like these, I'm on like my fifth week of 18 hour days yeah. and there's a, my, I leave my clothes in a pile by the shower, and I go downstairs to the couch and make myself one of these. Mm -hmm. and, and all of a sudden, I hear like, I, like something coming down the stairs, but it doesn't sound like Ozzy because it's not like a smooth dog trot. It's like this clumsy, uh, alarming falling, sound, yeah. alarming sound. And I look up, and he's dragging my jeans down the stairs with your, him. Your barbecue, my barbecue smelling soaked jeans. smelling jeans. He was just, and the look on his face is like. What is these smell so good? It was like all he just smelled brisket. He like to him they weren't jeans. He right. had hauled a brisket. You are just down a the vessel stairs. for brisket. I am a brisket vessel. <laughs> you are. Um, I've always said that about you. Yeah. Um now tell us a little bit again about Chef Fest. Sorry. Look away. <laughs> um, there's a um here you go. Tell us a little bit more about uh, you. Tell us your deepest dark red seek. No, no. I can't even get the word out. <laughs> um, Nothing like a three finger yeah, drink yeah, to kick exactly. off the morning. Yes. Yeah. So so now so yeah, Chef Fest is other opportunities that people how people can get involved in this. Well, Chef Fest is super cool because it's all about bringing um, friends, family, and food together. 
Um, and, and we're doing it through Lipton iced tea, right. you know, because it's, we, we feel that it's like, it brings the party to the table, brings everybody together. And then I was going to, like I was saying is in different cities throughout the country in the fall, we're going to be doing these kind of mm -hmm. huge parties that people could come to and, and all the information um, is right online. So. Right. That's yeah. awesome. And honestly, I have to say, I am one of those people like keeping it simple too. Like you can just like, I love putting, getting a jar like this putting tea in it and just putting fruit, like herbs fr fresh from your garden. Right. There's all sorts of things you can do to like fancy it up. Well, I also think too, when, when you're, even when I'm cooking at home, like when I'm cooking at the restaurant, I have 30, 40, 50 people helping right. me get the food done. You know, and maybe I'll make a brine and steep tea outside mm -hmm. and do all these things. But when I'm cooking at home and it's for me and Lizzie and Kai, or we have a group of people over, you want to keep it simple and that, that you could go and, and get some, Tea that's delicious, already right, made, right. goes right in the make brine. Make a brine with it. it. This is really kind of amazing. Yeah, make Again, a brine in like two minutes. Lemon, uh, what kind of leaf? Lemon, yeah, bay, bay leaf, leaf and honey. honey. And then there you go. Okay, we have some questions for the from the audience that we want to ask you, Michael. Hi, Michael. Over oh, here. Hi. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for coming in. So my brother and I were watching the game last night, as I'm sure everyone else was. Exactly. Um, born, in, born in Ohio. Yep. My brother thought of this great question to ask. Do you think that you can name a food dish after LeBron James because of his win list? Well, it's, you know, it's funny because, you know, I've been fortunate enough to lo know LeBron for a very long time he, because he went to high school in um, Akron and, you know, he's eaten at the restaurants and we've done some things for him at his homes and things like that. Uh, and we were going to name a burger after him um, when, and, and take the money from the burger and, and the proceeds would go towards his charity. But LeBron eats very little beef now, so we got to come up with something. Yeah, that's like you can't super have like healthy. LeBronico steak. Yeah, he's yeah, he's like... very he's very healthy. But you know, we'll come up with something. We'll come up with something that honors the calf. Something wine and gold themed. Um, yeah. You know, obviously the city is pretty ecstatic right now. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think we have another one down here. Yeah. Um, What's your favorite part of being on the chew? And does the brine work on other types of meats like steak or fish? Oh, great question. Um, my favorite part of being on the chew is, uh, you know, I started doing television on Food Network in 1998. Um, How'd you get discovered? I, in, in, in 1998, Food and Wine Magazine named me one of the 10 best young chefs in America. And it was the beginning part of Food Network. And I, they would have me on as a guest on the Sarah Moulton show. Got it. And so I did the Sarah Moulton show like mm -hmm. 10 or 15 times, and then they asked me to co-host my own show called The Melting Pot, Got it. Um, which was big in like prisons and nursing homes. Wow. And then... Um, it's a captive attention. Huge. Yeah, I mean, no one watched, the, no one watched the Food Network yeah. back then. And then it just, the Food Network continued to grow. We yeah. continued to grow. And but, but my favorite part about the chew is, you know, when I'm in the restaurants, I get to teach a small group of people recipes, the people that are working around me. Mm -hmm. And the chew, you get to teach tons of people yeah. how to cook and and really what um when the chew started we, we've done a thousand episodes now it started five years ago wow. and what we really committed to ourselves is we were going to make food that was of high quality and we made it from scratch but people could make it home mm -hmm. you know it wasn't about like iron chef where it's like right like people watch iron but you've chef also entertainment. done yeah, a I've, lot of i've done 50 iron chef wow. battles or 40 but 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 it was but iron chef isn't like isn't this cool now? Go try to make it, you know, but, yeah. but, but <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. yeah, but the chew is all about, um, we're going to show you how to make things that you could get on your table for your family in a timely fashion yeah. and sit around the table and enjoy yeah. dinner. And I will say to people who always think they want to get on TV that they have to get on TV first, but so many stories start with a magazine article or a print article, like yeah. these other and local television, like people think they're going to get that big show first. Sometimes those other little things lead to it. Yeah. I never TV. tried to be on TV. No? I never sent a tape. I yeah. you know, I was fortunate enough that they found yeah. me and right. I mean, times have changed a little bit now, yeah. but there was no internet right. or right. make exactly. a video or yeah. look at my YouTube Same. channel. Just you like know, I never tried to be a boozer. Booze yeah. found me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and it has. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Uh, we have one more right here, front row. Hey, Mike, how you doing? Good. I want to know, like, have there ever, you know, like, athletes inspired by other athletes and musicians is inspired by other singers, et cetera. I wanted to know, was there any chef that inspired you when mm. you were growing up? Sure, absolutely. Um, you know, uh, Jonathan Waxman, who's here in the city uh, that owns Barbuto, is, has been a tremendous inspiration. Um, to me and, and giving me fantastic advice throughout my career. Um, there's, uh, you know, some of the, uh, 
the, I went to culinary school in the 80s, so it was a different time. There were, there were no quote unquote celebrity chefs, there was no food TV, there, you know, so you learned from doing stages and working at places. And I was fortunate enough to do like stages with a chef named Larry Forgione, who's now his. Did you say stages? Stages where you'd go and like work a weekend or a month oh, or a couple wow, weekends okay. in the kitchen. So like uh, at the American place, I, I used to stage with Larry, who makes me feel so old. His son now, Mark, is a famous chef, um, who also was an iron chef. But, um, you know, I think Jonathan Waxman has probably given me some of my, the best cooking food guidance advice through my career. Like when we open Lola 20, almost, it'll be 20 years in March, um, Wax came in uh, the first week we were open and I said, just taste everything on the menu, tell mm -hmm. me what you think, blah, 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 blah. And he came in, he sat at the bar and we gave him, we put out every single dish on the menu and he took a couple bites and I, the restaurant emptied out and Liz and I sat down with him after, afterwards and I said, what, you know, what do you think about the food? He said, you know, if you take one ingredient out of every one of those dishes, the menu will be perfect. Wow, it's like and that Coco it, Chanel line, before you walk out of yeah, the house, take, take one, one thing, thing off. off. And, uh, <laughs> you know, it was a lesson that, that I learned as, yeah. as a, you know, a 20-something-year-old cook and, and that really has dictated the way that I continue to cook uh, oh, now. So yeah. Sometimes just a little simpler. Less is almost always more. Interesting. You know? Yeah. Well, uh, thank you very much. So check out Lipton Chef Fest online. And what's your social handles? What are your, your monikers? <laughs> what do you call them? Name? Uh, what's your name on oh, social? Oh, like on Twitter? I may sound like I'm 90. Like I just like grab a... <laughs> hey! Thing. I'm going to have a... some a, more a, bourbon. What's your handle, mister? <laughs> now, where are those butterscotch candies? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can... Anyway, just tell me. <laughs> you can, at LiptonBrighterBites.com, you can find all the information about this. My personal, like, Twitter and stuff is oh, yeah. Chef yeah. Simon, S-Y-M-O-N. That's easy. Yeah. Everything. Chef Instagram. Simon. Yeah, just put in S-Y-M-O-N and stuff will pop right. up. Got it. Well, we will do that. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank Appreciate you very much. It. Great to see you. Thank you. Thank you.